We're going to take a look at how you can use the VLOOKUP formula in Google Sheets to use something you know, like a state name, to look up something you don't know, like the sales tax rate, but you have connected in a separate part of your sheet. Here's how this works. The VLOOKUP formula has three necessary parameters or things you have to enter. The first one is the search key and that is what is the thing that you know that you're going to use to look up the thing you don't know. So in this case the thing I know is the state name in A2. So I can, I can either type that because it's a, a word I would put it in parentheses and we'll use this method first. So I'm going to look up Arizona and the next parameter is the range or where I'm looking. With this particular formula, the thing I'm looking for, Arizona, always has to be in the first column of the range for VLOOKUP. So that means I am going to look in columns F for Arizona, but I want my range to include whatever thing I'm looking for that I want to return, which is the sales tax rate in column G. So my range is going to be both columns, columns F, and column G. And again, the thing I'm looking for, Arizona, has to be in the most left column of that, column F. The next parameter is the index, or which column from the range do I want to return the value of. So whenever I find Arizona in column F, which column after that do I want to return? So in this case, I'm only searching for two columns, a range of two. So I could put an index of one to return the value in column F, or an index of two to return the value in column G. And in this case, that's what I want. So I will put a number two for index. The last parameter is optional, and that is whether or not the range is sorted. So in this case, the range is sorted. Everything is in alphabetical order. So if I'm looking for Arizona, it should be up with the A's in alphabetical order. And when you say is sorted true, that means if I spell Arizona wrong, it's still going to return a value, the closest value it can find. So in that case, you're not always going to get an exact match. So if you want an exact match only, you have to put false regardless of the sort. But for now, I'm going to put in true so I can show you what happens when you have only a close match. So I've finished my formula. I'll do the end parentheses and hit enter. And I will see because I typed in the word Arizona here, it found Arizona in column F and it returned the sales tax rate of 6%. So if I instead search for Alaska, and hit enter. It's going to give me that 0% tax rate. We should all move there. <laughs> um, and it'll show me zero. Now, like I said, this is not super efficient when I have to type in the value, but because in cell A2, I've put in a drop down so I can select from column F, I'm going to replace where I typed Alaska and instead put cell A2, so it's A2 now, and I can see whatever value is in A2 is going to be used in my formula now. So when I hit enter, as I select different states from my dropdown, my tax rate changes. Ooh, Delaware, another good place to move. We can see the tax rate changes and my formula shows me the different tax rate and my total will then calculates with that. So this is a really, really powerful tool. Now in this case, I said that my range I'm searching in is sorted, which is true. But let's imagine I type in a country instead of a state, something that isn't in my list. When I hit enter, first of all, I'm gonna get a red error because I'm trying to enter a value that isn't in my dropdown selection, but this is the thing to notice. It's still giving me a tax rate, even though I know Spain isn't in this list. And if I scroll down, what it's doing is, I said this is sorted, so it's looking for Spain in the S's. And it doesn't find it, but it's returning the value for the closest match, so the thing that happens right before Spain would be there, of 4%. Now you can imagine this could really throw off your data and cause problems. So in the case where you only want an exact match, you're going to want to put false in for the sort. And now I have my false sort, so it's only going to return an exact match. 
And so now when I try to look up Spain, which isn't in my range, and I hold my mouse over that formula cell, I will see the error, did not find value Spain in V lookup evaluation. So this case, the formula is telling me it's not there, so I can't return anything. This tool has a lot of powerful uses. In this case, I'm only looking up one value, but I'm going to come over to another example here where I have a sheet with a bunch of people who attended training sessions. I know the number of sessions they attended, the hours, but I want to get a list of the names they attended. That is something I have in a totally separate spreadsheet with the email address. So I can use VLOOKUP to look for the values here in email in this other sheet so I can return the list of sessions attended. So when we create that formula, I can create it once at the top, copy it down, and then fill in a whole bunch of missing data. So in this case, I'm going to do equals VLOOKUP, and I'm going to minimize my helper here. And the thing I'm looking for is the email address. So I will type on that email address. All these are fake emails, of course. And then I'm going to select where I'm searching. And that's actually in a different sheet, but I can still use this formula. So while my cursor is in the formula, I'm going to click on to the other sheet. And I'm going to select everywhere that I want to search. And remembering the thing I'm looking for has to be in the first column of the range. So I'll select column A and column B. And it looks like it didn't populate there. I'm going to go back in here and click in that. So now while range is selected, I'll go over to session names and it populates my range I selected right away in the formula. And you can see the way it tells the formula which sheet to look in is it adds the sheet name before the range of A and B in quotation marks with an exclamation mark. I'm going to make a comma and I'm going to say which index I want to return. And so I'm looking in column A. I have to look in the most left column and I want to return column B. So that's index two. Looking down through this list, it looks like it is sorted here, but I don't want approximate matches. I want only exact matches. So I'm going to say is sorted false so that if someone is missing from this list, I'm going to get an A instead of a close match. Go ahead and hit enter and it's bringing me back to my main sheet here. And I see the session names for that first entry are all populated. Now to copy this down, I can click and drag down or in one really quick movement, I can copy it down by holding my mouse over the bottom right corner where the dot is and double clicking. And that will copy it down so long as there's data in the hours column there. And now I have all that information super easy. I don't have to worry about copy and pasting and making mistakes. I also know where something is missing. Like I don't have anything for Curtis here. And as I scroll down, I don't have anything for Andre, but it looks like he attended something. So I've got to go find that missing data. I'm going to show you one extra step here. I'm going to undo where I copied it down and I'm going to show you how to turn this into an array formula. An array formula is going to populate the entire column F with one formula. So the steps to making an array formula is I start out by making my base formula and that would be the formula I use to populate one cell. I've already done that. To make this an array formula, then I have to wrap it with array formula. So at the very beginning and the very end, I'm going to add more parentheses. And then at the very beginning, I'm going to type array formula. So it's all around in that. All right, and for a quick tip, I'm going to undo that. One of the quick ways you can add an array formula is by holding down command shift return on Mac or control shift return on Windows, and that will automatically wrap your formula in array formula. So now that I've done that, the last step is to expand out the range. So instead of looking at the one cell of B2, I want to look up everything in column B. So I'm going to expand this from B2 all the way to be B2 colon B. And I can put the lowest value in if I want to. Scrolling down here, it looks like B21. Or I could leave it for all of column B and I would just get some empties down on the bottom. All right, I don't have to expand my range because it's already including everywhere I want to look. And I don't have to expand the index I'm returning because it's just the second of where my range finds a match. So when I hit enter, I will see my one formula now has populated the entire column. And I can't delete any of this stuff because it's populated from a formula at the top. 
So VLOOKUP is a super useful formula when there's one thing you know and something you don't know and you have a large data set you have to go look for it and use this to make it faster, more automated, and also to point out places where you might have missing data.